can I get a grande non-fat chai? Good morning guys, it is 8.15, I just got my Starbucks and I have arrived at work. I never film in the morning so this is kind of shocking and surprising. But I thought I would update you guys because I've gotten 70% into dark places and I think I know who the murderer is. So that's a great way to start my morning. I didn't get great sleep last night because Hayden got home late but also I was scared. But like I said, I, I think I know who the murderer is, I'm kind of thrilled about it and I think I'm going to continue to listen to this at work and hopefully by the time I get out of work I will be able to update you guys on my thoughts on the book as a whole. Okay, sorry for the weird angle. I am in my car, but I am parked on the street because it is almost six o'clock and I am about to head to the Lee Bartuco signing. And by head to, I mean like I'm parked downtown and I found street parking that was free, which is awesome, but also like I feel very vulnerable because people are just walking by. But I thought I would update you guys because I have finished Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. I looked up pronunciation, it's Gillian, not Jillian, so I'm sorry if that irritated any of you guys yesterday. I ultimately decided on four stars for it. I really, really enjoyed it. It's definitely my type of thriller. I'm thinking Gillian Flynn's probably one of my favorite thriller authors. The more I think about it and try to decide, like, which are my favorites of the ones I have read, I have to say, like, as basic of an answer as it is, Gone Girl is definitely my favorite. The Cool Girl monologue is just next level, and the way that the book ends both open-ended and complete it is just my perfect ending for thriller so I think that was my issue with Dark Places is that I didn't feel like the ending was that satisfying the killer was not who I thought it would be so I guess that was good in a way like I liked that I was sort of surprised but it felt cheap especially given all of the build-up for some of the other things I think that's my issue is like when things come completely out of left field sort of like when I was reading the turn of the key a couple of weeks ago I really enjoyed that book but the ending pissed me off because I don't want to spoil that book but the lead up and the whole premise of the book is not at all what the conclusion leads you to believe and I guess sometimes it's fun to be thrown off but I want there to be a surprising yet natural conclusion if that makes sense I don't want an entire story to be about something and the conclusion's like oh but guess what like it's not this at all and it's something that you never would have possibly guessed given the information that we have given you so I don't love that anyway I still enjoyed this I liked that human decision and human like morality was very much at play in this book which I know it is for like all thrillers but this one and Gillian Flynn I think in general does a really good job at getting you to sympathize with characters even if they're unlikable so I don't know I really liked it I it might be my favorite book of the readathon I mean I've only finished one but I have a feeling that it's going to be my favorite probably so I'm really glad that I read that that was one that I like just wasn't sure if I was going to ever pick up but I, I'm glad that I did I just started an anonymous girl which I'm super excited about I wanted another thriller on audio but I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to find one for my library I have a really good library but if it's anything adult it's gone like <laughs> you're not gonna get a copy of it for like six months but I picked this one up because I've seen everybody else read it I think Kayla's reading it I think Zoe's reading it so I just figured why don't I read it too and be a bandwagoner so I'm about an hour ish into it like an hour of the audiobook not like my reading speed an hour and honestly I'm really liking it I love the way that it's told I like the two points of view it's really good on audio because there's two different narrators for the psychiatrist and the not patient but like the participant in the study so it's cool I like the way it's being told I think this is definitely my speed I think I'm discovering that I prefer kind of more of a psychological thriller and thrillers where the morality and likability and narrator are all sort of questionable like those are the kind of thrillers i like like gone girl dark places like the turn of the key didn't really do it for me as much as those kinds of books do and i think an anonymous girl is going to do that so i'm excited about it i'm liking it so far to be honest when i get home i don't really think that i'm going to be picking up the good daughter today i think i'm gonna save that one to finish this weekend mostly because i want to get through things quickly during the week to keep myself accountable and keep myself excited for the readathon so i'm gonna continue probably to listen to an anonymous girl tonight but also i think i might pick up like strange grace or not even bones i think i want something spooky but like different maybe something fantastical so i don't is an hour too early to get to a book signing i don't know i'm gonna go ahead and like get out of my car now but i'll check in with you guys after the signing do i ever go through my fan pages on instagram <laughs> when i'm just like in the bathtub being like how great am i no and i'll tell you why okay first of all i am so grateful to anybody who wants to talk to 
talk about these books or uh, these characters, like you keep this world alive and keep drawing people into it when I'm in my little cave writing, so it is very appreciated. But being online is like walking down a hallway and you're like, high five, high five, high five. And then every so often somebody punches you in the face. <laughs> Hello, beautiful people. I am back home. It is 9.30. I've gotten the footage that I already have edited which is good and i had a good time at the signing it was really nice i got to meet someone that i met on the internet first uh in person i got to meet chuck which was super super cool and um just hearing lee speak was really cool as well i've heard really good things about her as a speaker i'm not a huge fan of signings if i'm gonna be real with you guys they make me uncomfortable <laughs> being in a place where everybody's really excited but not knowing anyone it's just strange for me so i try to only go to signings where i know that the author i don't want to say is a good speaker but some people are more entertaining than others, correct? So I heard that Lee was a really good speaker and I was really excited to listen to her speak and she did a fantastic job. She was super nice. She liked my YA snake belt, so that was really cool. And I got my book signed, so that was good. And it was not a super painful process. I feel like sometimes signing lines take forever, but I was in and out of the signing line in like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, so that was really awesome. I think I'm going to start Strange Grace by Tessa Grattan. This is just so different than everything else that I'm reading right now that... I think it'll be good. I want something very different. Thrillers are cool, but the premise of both The Good Daughter and Dark Places were like are so similar. There's murder in the very beginning and it's like family murder. So I want something different and I think I'll be able to get through this one a lot quicker. So I'm gonna go ahead and start reading this. I will probably update you guys just one more time tonight because a bit tired, but I'm excited. I heard this is Polly. And I have nothing but good things, so. Okay, so I'm about 57 pages into Strange Grace by Tessa Grattan, and I'm enjoying it. This is just what I needed after reading different spooky stuff. This is definitely eerie and creepy, but it's just different than a thriller, obviously. I mean, it's young adult fantasy as opposed to an adult thriller, but I'm liking it a lot. It is about three young people who live in this town where everything is perfect, except for every seventh year, they have to sacrifice one boy to the devil, essentially. And after they sacrifice the boy, the town continues to flourish. If they don't sacrifice the boy, then there's going to be plague and famine and like everything bad ever. I'm really enjoying it. I'm super impressed with Tessa Grattan's ability to make her characters oh hello like i was trying to say i really like tessa grattan's ability are you coming up here to okay you want to say hi oh are you purring have you not gotten attention today is that right i miss you too come see oh okay that's a good boy yeah like I was trying to say, I think Tessa Gratton does a really good job at making her characters. Oh my god, what? Can I talk? <laughs> I can't. Okay, so we're doing it from this angle. Basically, is that better for you? I really like Tessa Gratton's ability to make her characters have backstory and history that's believable and compelling within 50 pages. Like, I want these three to get together. You can tell that they like each other, you can tell that they have a thing for each other, and I'm here for it. Do I care as much about like the blood sacrifice and like the devil? I mean, it's cool, but I'm really just here for the romance. You can tell I'm really missing my romance this week, but it's cool. Also, I'm, I can't with him. You guys, he's so cute. That's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to tell you guys. Uh, I'm really liking this book. I'm excited to read more of it tomorrow. And I'm sorry, this wasn't a more exciting vlog, but I should probably go and pay some attention to this little guy because it's a little needy. <laughs> but I love you guys so much and until next time.